Hello there, welcome back to another uh, show. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Spielberg's underrated films. Now, Spielberg's an interesting director in the sense that if we are kind of a pretentious know-it-all, watch tons of foreign movies, snob like me, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Spielberg's kind of difficult in a weird way because he does make very obvious films. But I think he's too easy to actually um, dismiss. I, I, I it's, it's an easy thing for a lot of people to dismiss him if you're into like foreign films and say he's the figure of hate, he's the sellout figure who enabled Michael B and all this other stuff to make money. Yeah, he's made a lot of money, he's made a lot of films. I like a lot of his films. And I think he's kind of like overshadowed by his own reputation in a weird way. Like he's just like everybody, like Hitchcock, a lot of directors who become really famous, there is a kind of reputation around them that might not actually be the real person, it might just be our interpretation of the real person. And a lot of stuff comes out probably in the films that are less popular, because you, you find stuff in them that are more interesting than some of the successes. I mean, there's some films he made that I like a lot that are popular, you can't really say that much about I like his Jurassic Park movie. There's not much to say about Jurassic Park. You know, I'd like to do a film, a video with Jaws at some point, but you have to do a separate video with Jaws. Um, Close Encounters is a well-made film. I'm not sure about that much to say about it. E.T. is the same way. I'm not sure much of what to say about E.T. But they're really well-crafted films. I mean, I've done Indiana Jones series. You can see that on my channel. He makes a lot of entertainment films. He's a heart, he is an entertainment director. I mean, I think he knows that deep down. He wanted to be serious every so often. So he does his serious films like uh, Slender's List. You know, that it's a good film. I mean, it's another one people are snobbish about now because it's, oh yes, it's not sure. You know, which I joke I can make as well because I, I can be snobbish at times. But, it's still a well-made film, I think it, it was a bit over the top towards the end, but I think its merits are sometimes overlooked, you know. But it made a lot of films that have been a bit underrated, I think it's a shame because it shows a much wider range of director that's, I think it's been thrown away because it's like, we've got, we've Spielberg, we've got Spielberg figured out, don't let's not go any further with him, let's not look into anything else, it's like, we've got him figured out, he's had his peak, and we have a few more films that's it now. We've got we've got it figured. The peak early period, Jurassic Park and in uh Sinner's List, and then a bunch of other films. That's kind of the general thing with Spielberg, two peaks and uh other films he made. But he made some fun films that are not liked or are or underappreciated. We've got to start of course with 1941. His uh wonderfully over the top John Belushi film with Dan Aykroyd and a cast of thousands about the Japanese trying to invade America and failing horribly. Now this film would be, if anyone had heard of this, nowadays it probably thought it was insensitive. I think it was thought it was insensitive even then. But with this whole idea of how the Japanese are treated badly because they're shown as incompetent and like, it's a comedy. It's about it's a bit stereotypes and, it, and the big joke of the film is the Japanese threat is all, all needs a bit of threat to make the Americans panic like crazy and go absolutely insane and do things much worse than Japan ever could. Which is kind of based on fact but really overplayed. Robert Zemeckis and Bob, Bob Gale wrote it and who they did Back to the Future. They, this is one of the early scripts when I'm doing all these really fast paced scripts that were a bit cynical. And this is one of them and this is a, it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. But it is big and broad. And if you look at the panics going on now with the coronavirus and the riots about different things, you know, it's like, is it wrong? <laughs> you know, it's a really interesting film about how crazy and nuts people can be under pressure and how we don't always act, you know, as nice as we think we should. And it's a very different Spielberg, it's a darker, most cynical side of Spielberg who made stuff like Jewel and Jaws. And this was a, a sign that he was alive and well still. And would still I think Spielberg, the darker side of him, is needed in the films that really work, as well as the lighter side, I think he needs the balance of both.
to make it interesting and I think in this one probably the cynical side overtook him slightly but it's still very interesting it shows the kind of dynamics he needs it's even a film that for a lot of people failed sometimes shows you you need to let it dark to make it work and I think people concentrate so much on Spielberg for the light that you don't really know the darkness which takes me to the next underrated film which is Empire of the Sun which is a wonderful film made by J.G. Ballard's novel it stars a young Christian Bale, John Malkovich and it's set in a, in a Japanese internment camp where Bale plays a boy who's British who his family was in Shanghai and was overtaken and they basically trying to survive the war and trying to survive the camps and it shows hell on earth basically it shows life in the camps and how difficult it was and how horrible it was and but it still plays it as an adventure story with Jim trying to survive but it's almost like a psychopathic adventure because he's becoming more and darker and weirder and stranger and as the time goes on it's like it's about the female nature that overtakes man in these circumstances now people say that Spielberg toned down Ballard which is probably true because I don't think you can do pure Ballard on the screen you have to do a version of it but it's also if you have to look at it as what it is as a film it's really dark and really stub it just doesn't throw gore in your face all the time it actually shows you the kind of psychological damage and the idea that this kid's delusional he's looking at the brighter side of life even as reality is thrown torture and horrors at him it's him trying to survive it and it's showing you it's a delusional mind trying to survive in a delusional situation there where there's no real hope so it's a more complicated film than I think it's given credit for and obviously it's viewed as the film we made to set up, set up Schindler's List but I think I like this one better than Schindler's List you know, I think it's more interesting as a film Schindler's List is more of a statement about the Holocaust but as a film I think Empire of the Sun is really interesting and it is very underrated because I think it really is pure Spielberg but the darker side of them and I think uh, people should look at it more closely because there's a lot there that's really good it's the same in 1941 there's a lot there that's really good then we've got Always which was a a remake of a guy named Joe that Spielberg made just after Last Crusade and it was hated it was the film was basically Ghost before Ghost and then Ghost came out and made a lot of money and Always didn't make anything and it's not as schmaltzy and overly sentimental, which it is. I'm not saying it's one of his best films, I'm just saying it's underrated. And it shows, it kind of shows you something that would happen in Hook later where his worst side of schmaltziness came out. But here it's balanced a lot more because Richard Dreyfus is one of his better performances. Holly Hunter, John Goodman. People, they grounded this one, so it never, it never went too schmaltzy. It was still a romantic story and there's still about the dangers of firefighters who have to survive in a very tricky difficult situation and what happens when one of them dies and the loss of that so it's really interesting even though it goes a bit too sentimental it's still a worthy film it's still underrated I think it should be looked upon as something that's a bit more worthwhile than what it gets now we're going to the um, 2000s for two films and 2000s was not a good time for Spielberg I don't think. I think it's when he was at his most self-important after he won the Oscars for Slender's List. And he made stuff like Saving Private Ryan, which I'm not a fan of. I think it's a very obvious film and it's well made but it's obvious and I don't think it's it deserves all its accolades. I think it's a lesser Spielberg film. I'd much rather watch so many of his other films that are less thought of than watch this. And he, he did stuff like Minority Report in the other in World of Worlds, which are two films I'm not a big fan of. I think they're both kind of overlong. I think Minority Report is basically about a fascist who doesn't realise that it. it's about a fascist system and it lets the character off the hook so easily about horrible things he does. So those are not films I like. I don't like his cruise films. I think they're they don't get the best of each other. Uh, but I made one or two good films I like a lot and that I thought were underrated. One was AI which you're not meant to bring up because it was a Kubrick film and Kubrick died and Spielberg ruined it and yeah it's not as good as it would have been with Kubrick but it's still interesting you know it's got interesting feels to 
it does feel disjointed. It feels like there's bits of Spielberg that didn't understand what Kubrick was doing. And uh, you can see that intimidation sometimes. There's a, there's a feeling he spells out too much that Kubrick would not spell out. And the best stuff is when he doesn't spell stuff out. Like early on, the first sequence when he, the little boy, people Haley Joel Osmond, who is the is a robot, and that time he spends with the family in the first third of the film, is textbook Spielberg. It's so well done. It's all about trauma. It's all about trauma from the family unit. And it's a, it's a great 40 minute sequence. Really, it's so well shot. Like, um, like I, I think that one you you can't really challenge them on it. It's a really good sequence. And I think some of the stuff with Jude Law is really good as well. Because Jude Law is a juggalo thing. It, it, it works really well. And some of the the darker elements of the uh, sin city, the city that's full of sin and all the rest of it, is interesting. But it's very Kubrick influenced. I think Spielberg pulled back a bit in ways that Kubrick wouldn't have to show the kind of the cold dynamics of what humanity wants with robots and how they're doomed by their own delusions Spielberg can't go that dark and there is a dark, the, the, the worst section is the kind of trash pile of all the robots that are destroyed it might be sentimental towards them and I, th I don't think that was Kubrick wanted, I don't think that was really where it was going and it's a bad sequence because it just feels like a director panicking to understand why this sequence is there in the film but the, it brings it back though and does the thing where, where the friendly starts to go towards the end where the robot, you start to see the robot is actually neurotic and weird and it's about how weird the robot is and that's the, what actually Spielberg's good I actually understand what Kubrick was after with the robot being neurotic and a weird first step towards AI replacing humans and that's the thing, people thought the end was a bit um, Aliens, in fact, which is the evolved AI and how they saw this younger version of what they are. And it's a very ambiguous sequence about how AI would expand beyond humanity and I don't think Spielberg quite got it, but he got the neurosis part of it and I think he got enough to make it interesting. I don't think it was enough to make it perfect, but I think it was enough to make it interesting attempt at AI. I think it's an interesting film. It's a really worthy film and I think it gets a lot of sh a lot of cheap shots taken out of it. It's undeserved. I think it was a, a genuine attempt. I think it made some mistakes but it's a genuine attempt. Then there's a terminal which is a Spielberg film about um, a guy stuck in a terminal because of some legal thing and he has to stay in a terminal played by Tom Hanks and this is really underrated. Um, I've only seen it once, but I really remember it really well, and it's it's charming. It's people were trying to be charming, and actually succeeding, but it was thought of as just obvious, and it was it was pretty much thrown away as soon as it was released. It was like, no, nah, I want to see something different. I want to see this. But I really liked. I liked the, the supporting characters were fun. It was a trifle. It was it was meant to be a, just a little film that wasn't trying to be the next big thing, and I took it as that. I thought it was really interesting. And it shows a kind of more human side of them, and. It was just ignored. It was completely ignored. Uh, but it was a modest side of that thing that is nice to see. I think it's a underrated film. So I definitely recommend Terminal. Terminal was really good. And this was still made during the time he was making some uh, more self-indulgent films like Munich, which was really obvious. This was a charming little film we made. But at the same time, that was really good. Now we come to the later films. You know, I think... Um, by this point, Spielberg's been viewed as, his, his peak's over. He's still making films, but we're not expecting great stuff from him anymore. It's like, he's in his 70s, it's, you shouldn't expect that from him anymore. So, his later films are kind of viewed as, like, throwaways. They're not, you get some hype before they come out, but no one's really that excited. They're excited about other directors rather than him now. The view is, he's had his time. But he's made some nice stuff that I think uh, should be looked at. I mean, he made Avengers of Tintin. The Avengers of Tintin is charming. It's all animated. It's, it's a Tintin movie that really works. And Tintin's a very French creation. It's an adventure story, but it's very French. And he heard people are doing Tintin. It's like, there's no way that's going to work. That's just, how's he going to get it? But it works. It's so charming. And it, it has 
action scenes, but the action scenes are charming with any character, they're all about character. It has, it uses mocap really well to actually, because it doesn't try and be reality, it's animated and it actually is like, this is fake. We're not going to try and do reality, we're doing fakery. And it really works because the actors play up and become bigger than life and it really works. And it's a beautiful old film and it's very, very underrated and I saw that well, I'm probably doing a video on that to do into detail about it, but I need to rewatch it obviously. But it's a charming film and it's really unique and it's probably one of his best films for years and it was completely not. It was like it did okay and let's forget it, I even exists because it's not a film that's brought up much to Spielberg or generally and it's like well that's a shame because it's really rather wonderful and really it is very charming and it really is a real return to form for him because it really delivers humanity to it to the situation it could be really absurd. That's what he's been doing really good recently is actually taking films like Terminal or like Tintin which could be absurd and creating something unique with them and something that is personal, that is different, but it's not obviously personal, it's not a political speech or anything, it's just about this weird absurd situation, let's see what we can do with it. The final one I'm going to talk about is the post, which is a bit more political, but it's kind of obvious political, it's a liberal thing about the how the Washington Post didn't count out to Nixon and they helped you know, bring her down, bring up Watergate and create a system to get rid of Nixon. So obviously you know what's going to happen, you know they didn't fold, you know they were, this is a great moment for journalism. And it's obvious in all those things, like, they, 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 it's not subtle. And when it came out it was like, this will be the thing to hit, hit Trump or something, and it's like, no nah, it wasn't really that, it was a, it's an old style newspaper film about these people in this bad situation. Meryl Streep plays the owner, Tom Hank plays the editor. And so they're trying to decide what to do. So it becomes a human story but they're trying to decide. Because even though we know what they did, they don't know what they did. They don't. They think it could all go to hell because of it. And it's an old fashioned newspaper film that you used to get in the 30s all the time. Which you don't get anymore. And I love those old films and for this it is a bit nostalgia. But it's so nicely made and it's like well Sometimes you don't need to be like cutting edge to to work. You just need to have to have a nicely made film, and this was it. This was a really wonderfully made film, but it's it wasn't really viewed as anything great. And I, I think that's what Spielberg in his underrated films he tends to not try and be too self-important. But I think it's not some of his better films. I just think that people were expecting this cliched thing of you're going to be trying to do a self-important film and all the rest of it. I mean he did Lincoln which was a very good film actually and it really worked. So I got the kudos but usually now it's less so so he's kind of on a downturn for the critics as well I think. I think they've tried to phrase someone else now he's just like yeah Spielberg who cares. But he's still doing good work and I think we should actually look at Bjorn Berg views of him as the cliché, because I think our views of him are, are stocked in the 80s and 90s and even the 2000s of what he was doing then and some of the things he was doing was kind of, kind of annoying and he's kind of moved on and we kind of haven't and we should really look at the career now, the full career rather than just little bits and bobs of it and actually see what the full career is and what the strengths, what the weaknesses. I think it's, I think we kind of should move on from hating Spielberg for everything and actually just say there's good stuff, there's bad stuff but it's interesting, it is a career that's partly in Hollywood, partly as an entertainer, partly striving to do greater things and sometimes failing but there's interesting stuff going on there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm sure it wasn't completely coherent but I'm trying to get something, I'm not quite sure if I'm getting to it yet but I think there's more interesting stuff there and I might do some more videos on this area to see if I can articulate it more as I go. Right, bye for now, I hope you enjoyed it.